Hey, how's it going? This is Rama from Rama Time, and welcome to Satisfactory, episode 8. There's been a few bits done since you were last around. However, there is some important stuff to do. We have things to unlock. We have a new milestone to unlock. We've actually got quite a few since we did the space elevator parts. So let's get that pesky intro sequence out of the way so that we can get busy. If you remember in the last episode, we added in the elevator parts to unlock tiers 5 and 6. And here they are. And today we're going to be concentrating on oil processing and getting this all set up. So first of all, I need to go and unlock this. Now you might notice it needs these motors, which use rotors and stators to build. Now extremely luckily, I repurposed the assembler that was making our advanced wiring and changed it to make motors. So there is already a few sitting here ready. And now we can unlock this milestone. Kaboosh. Kaboosh. Kaboom. Milestone reached. Oil acquisition and refining unlocked. Oil-based products can now be made. The byproducts of oil refinement can be used after further processing, as seen in the refinery. Caution. This is a reminder to minimize the chance of expiration during out-of-base activities. <laughs> so we need to have a little look. Right, so we can now do the oil extractor, which is going to need those motors, the encased beams and wire, no problem, and then refinery, similar kind of requirement. Brilliant, okay. Now that we have oil processing, we can get the plastic underway as well as the rubber. Once we have those two, we'll be able to unlock industrial manufacturing. Once we have our manufacturer, we can come to here to tier 6 and we can unlock the conveyor belt mark 4. But now we have a new thing to scan for, crude oil. Let's see how far we are from some. Ah, there, there we go. There's some only 900 meters away. A thousand that way. 855 that way. So, there's oil all around us. Oh, we're in the money. So that means there's oil somewhere near our coal collection that's behind our steel mill. Over this way, I'm not sure. And there's a good chance there's some... Ah, uh, that looks directly behind there. So there's some over that way as well. Honestly, I am kind of feel a bit spoiled for choice. And I'm really not sure what one to go for, but I think first of all I need to tool up, get everything I need, and go on a bit of an adventure, and make a plan. This is interesting. So I'm just over by our coal collection over there, and check it out, look. We've got, it's three or four oil patches just down there on the floor. Check it out. So it's three, and I'm pretty sure it's two and normal, and one is pure. So that means we can get quite a lot of oil out of this little area here. And there's a good amount of water, so I could actually utilize this area to bump up my power a little bit for a short while. Because we're next to coal. We've got coal just there, which there are, there's plenty of, and these oil patches. So I could build something, just comes up off the floor, maybe that direction a little maybe you're along that shoreline there and then a mini power plant just over here or something here he comes look yeah this could be quite interesting the first thing I've got to do though is get all the oil extractors down so that I can kind of see what I'm working with and see where I want to bring them problem is I don't really want it around that area because it's all kind of murky and horrible like when you go down there it gets really foggy whereas over here it's much nicer so I might bring it this way because it's all flat, it shouldn't really be a big problem. It's just a case of running pipes. But yeah, let's go for it. So what you'll see is as we run nearer, do you see how it's getting darker and dingier? Oops, and you fall into the water. Oh, there's a sparkle in there, so you know what that means. One of these. Oh, ho, ho, ho. There he is. Nice, thank you. Might as well clean up the mess. Oil extractor. 
So we'll have them heading out that way. There's another one. And another one there. This one's the pure one, right. So the pure one can produce 240 oil per minute. And a normal one can produce 120. Obviously these are overclockable, but I don't think you can pass more than 300 through a, a pipe anyway. So mm, I need to do some maths. But first of all, let's uh, get all this pipe work somewhere a bit nicer. I'm going to build the factory just here, because if I go too far over that way, the fog kicks in. Whereas here it looks fairly nice. There's a bit of a kind of mess here, so we can clear this up. That's the quick way to do some of it. Um, and then, yeah, we'll build up. We'll make it so it's just off the ground. I don't want to go too high because I don't want to have to push these uphill much. But um, actually, I might not even build it up. I might just, yeah, I might just have it like that. We'll see. We'll see. Let, let's let's see what we can do. Let's have a think about it. There, something like that. You're getting up there's a little bit tricky though. Look, there we go. So what this is is I've built an entire underground floor so I can bring in the pipes and I can do them all under the floor and have them come up. Because I thought that would be really quite cool. I've got my flashlight on for some reason. There we go. Um, I thought that would be really cool if they come up through the floor to, to feed these. And I've done some maths. And yeah, this is going to be quite a complex project. I won't bore you too much with the details. But essentially I've got to break this down into three parts. So the first part's going to be making just fuel out of all three of these. And what will happen is when I make the fuel it will create... Um, let me just show you quick in a refinery. See if we go, if we take a look at what we can do in the refinery. You've got... So you could turn oil straight into plastic or rubber. Fine. Easy enough. That's what I did last time around. However, I was looking at these and these are the residual plastics. And these are made out of um, this stuff, the uh, polymer resin and water. And there's also uh, residual rubber, which is the same. Now, if we make this fuel here, it creates 30 parts of this polymer resin to every 40 of the fuel it makes. So my thought was that if I set up a bunch of refineries just making these and have the fuel go off into what will be the fuel generators, but then I can turn all of this polymer resin into the plastic and the rubber. So I've done the maths and here are my three pipes. Now one of them is a pure which I will overclock to 300 and the other two are normal and I'll overclock those to 240. Now for the 300 I'll put down five refineries which will make enough resin and fuel that I'll then run another four refineries making the plastic and another five refineries making the rubber. It's all very complex and it's a bit crazy so I'll tell you what let me just get on with it and build it and then we'll have a look at it once it's done. That'll be yeah that will be much easier to understand what's going on. I just wanted to share this cool little tip with you um, and that is how to put these into the floor so that they don't look like they're just clipping and they actually look like it's properly designed to go in the floor. It's a bit of a kind of workaround but this is how you do it. So basically you place a wall under there like so and then use a wall mount for pipe like that. Then remove that wall, grab your floor and add it again and then pop your pipe on and that is it. And that looks really cool. It looks really neat and tidy. And then obviously under here, now you can't see anything, but if you hover around, you'll find it. There it is. And then you just pull that out and put it wherever you want it to go. But obviously as underneath is not really seen, it's not too worrying. Not too much of a problem. I can send it off over there and all is good. Nifty, huh? Got the first lot of refineries down. And this is actually super clean and nice. So all the pipework goes under the floor and it comes up through these glass panels here. So you can kind of see what's going on down there as well, which looks really, really cool. And I've got the right number at the moment. That's basically the first phase done. I now need to move on to working out what to do with all the, the, the stuff that it produces. Well, once again, after an awful lot of effort, I present to you phase one and phase two of our oil processing plant with an additional little power plant over here on the side because of the fact that turning this thing on would brown out my entire 
factory. So let me show you what we've got going on. First of all, I just built this. It is exactly the same as the ones back at the base, but with a slightly different layout. So we have our three pumps powering eight coal generators. It's an interesting building layout in that it all looks like this this time. <laughs> so I've put the belts up high, glass floors so that you can see all the pipework going underneath, which I think looks great, the way these go into the floor. Like I say, there's two rows of them. So we have a similar story over this side, which again, I just think looks absolutely fantastic. It's a kind of combination of open top with a few ceiling bits. But also I've added these windows so that we can always see if the water is flowing properly or not. And the coal is actually coming all the way from over here and actually travels by belt all this way from up there uh, from our coal collection that we're actually supplying our steel mill from. But there was enough additional coal that it won't cause a problem. But Rory, I hear you shout. What about the plastic and the rubber and all of the oil processing? That was what we came here for. Oh yes, you're right. Sorry, I'll stop going on about that. I was just quite pleased with that. It's very cool. Anyway, so this is our building. Now, like I say, this is phase one and two of a three-phase setup. And yeah, this is quite crazy. Um, I like this. That's the water going in because there are two sources of water coming into here, which is for making the plastic and the rubber with the alternate recipes. Then all the oil comes in through this here, which goes off down over there, as we saw. And if we go and stand just in the middle here, it's a great view. I mean, it's a bit foggy right now. It's a bit of a shame, but it's okay. Again, it's another half open one. I didn't want to completely seal it because of the fumes. Not that's a real thing. But check it out. This just looks absolutely great. And if you get high up, which at some point when I develop the upstairs it will have um, walkways and you'll be able to look down here and see like all the way the pipe work looks through the floor it's fantastic it's one thing you've got to give this game is it looks so good it really does but anyway just to quickly explain what's going on here on this side we have nine oil refineries on that side we have four oil refineries so this is a set of five four and four so what these are doing is creating fuel and this uh, polymer, polymer resin. And the polymer resin is basically being converted into the residual stuff. So residual rubber. So these are alternate recipes. Um, uses that plus the water, which is why we have water over there. And it's the same story over this side with these guys. We're making the residual plastic. And here we're using the resin again plus water. So a bunch of water comes in from this guy here. And all the pipe work is all done under the floor. The belt work I kept above, but I, I don't know, I might still change the belt work because it's kind of boring. It's all right. I mean, this is a really functional method to do it. And at the moment, I've just got the plastics going into this bin, the rubber will go into that bin, and all the fuel will go into these storage tanks. And this is just a temporary setup because what will happen is ultimately the fuel will go up to the floor above, up here, and be used in fuel generators. And the important thing to remember with all of this oil stuff is that everything needs to be running. If anything's ever full, then it stops the entire system. So for example, if I've got nowhere for this plastic to go, if this plastic all backs up, this will stop working, which means the polymer resin will, stop, will start backing up. And again, if the polymer resin starts backing up, then this will no longer create the fuel. And so therefore the whole system just basically stops. So we've got to be really careful of that. But anyway, I am super, super, super excited. I know it doesn't really sound like it, but I might sound a little bit odd at the moment. Sorry, I've, I've actually come down with a cold and it's a bit annoying. But I, and even if it's hard to tell, I am actually genuinely very excited because we're about to plug this in for the first time and see it all kind of kick in. Um, although I did just realize I did forget to do one thing. Uh, so I now remember why I placed this door here, because I knew I'd have to come out here and do some additional work. I like this. This is a good view from this side, it's just it's a shame that it's um, so foggy. But yeah, we've got this kind of nice walkway that allows us to get down here, but what I realised, I remembered, uh, I've got no, no power going out to my um, oil, oil extractors, so we need to do something about that. So I'm going to do it like this. 
So we'll go into power, use the double outlet, and what this allows me to do is connect power like so. Um, I actually, oh, did I, do, I don't know if I did it that end. We need to do this as well. And then I will bring from this power out here. Yeah, sitting in there looks pretty cool actually. Alright. Right, there we go. Pretty easy. Now we just gotta get back. I didn't really clear this area out here like I normally would because I kinda don't ever plan to come back out here. Now that it's done, it's done. So I must remember to mention as well, this is really important. The way I have set up that entire room is entirely balanced with these. So we have, oh, who's attacking me? What the hell? I was doing an address. Hang on a minute, I've got to fight. An important point I do want to mention again is that these are all perfectly balanced with the number of refineries I've built in there. So we have two normal nodes and one pure node. The pure I've uh, used a power shard to put it to 300 and the two normal nodes are ramped to 240 using power shards. And that's why we have for five, four and a four. And that's basically perfect for these as they are kind of right now. So that's cool. Just wanted to mention, I just put my Blade Runners on as well, so I'm now moving around much quicker than I was before. I didn't realise I didn't have them on. Yeah, this is, co this is a cool view from out here, if it wasn't so foggy. But you come in this way, and you can run all the way down here, and you can see underneath it all the pipeworks and everything that's going on underneath. See, you come down here, and go up here. Oh, there you can see that's what's happening to get that coal. I just built this little tower and kind of bridge. I quite like working over the water. It's quite relaxing. So it's now time. It's now time we're going to power up our factory. This entire factory, including the oil nodes, has a single circuit breaker, which is that one to that one. So when I connect these, it should start kicking in. And hopefully, because I added my additional power plant over there, it didn't max out our power, which is really good. You can see now we've got this nice 2100 megawatts sitting there. We're only using half of it. Great. You can hear noises in here. This is all kicking in. That guy there, he's starting to pump the water in. We should see down here. Yep, yeah, look, we've got oil coming in. We haven't on that one though, we need to keep our eye on that one. Oh, there it is. It's just taking a minute. Alright, so let's have a look in here. Nothing yet, nothing yet. I don't think I need to put any pumps anywhere. I'm hoping that this elevation is kind of fine. But we can see this one. That's up there, that's up there. There it goes. We can now see it moving. Oh, slowly filling up. Is it getting up the... Yeah, that's moving up. Excellent, excellent. So now when we have a look in here, there we go, we can see. Right, so we should start seeing our first polymer resins starting to appear out the back here. Yep, yep, yep. There they go, there they go. Ah ha ha. Here they come. There they all go. They're going in. Brilliant. Which means these guys here are now seeing polymer resin plus water, so they're creating rubber. 
So we got rubber going. Hey rubber. And over this way I want to start seeing plastic. I'm not seeing any plastic. I just need to be more patient, I think. <gasps> there it goes! <laughs> Fantastic. So we have plastic being made now. So, yeah, there's our first two plastic. Brilliant. Okay, so that's now working. These guys, I think, might take a little while to start filling up. But if we just check inside this one... Oh, no. Not inside this one. See, because this is all set up as an overflow system as well, or manifold, or whatever you want to call it, uh, it'll take a little while for the system to kind of back up. But like I say, it's pretty much perfectly optimized. So once it backs up, it will just it will run spot on. But that's creating the fuel, goes into the pipes, goes under the floor, and will eventually start appearing in these guys here. Um, that's the up and out ready for when I build upstairs. But I just found this bit here. Look, we can see there is water in those pipes. So I'm going to make this bit of floor glass so that we can easily see. Yet yeah, we've got a full pipe. So it's going up there. It's going into this one. There we go. Lovely. These will all fill up. And in theory, by the time I've created enough plastic, it should be ready. Oh, look, we can see. Yes, there it is. The wonderful orange liquid. Once we start making, a, once we've made enough plastics, which we already have, we just need a hundred to unlock the tier. <laughs> Sorry, the milestone. Uh, the same for rubber. 88. Oh, it's really not going to take very long at all. Although it doesn't seem like it's doing a lot now. Why not? Oh, it's the resin. I think I have discovered a slight flaw in my design. Um, and what it seems is that the pipes for the fluid are all backing up. Because, well, if a pipe can take, what, 300 per minute? Or they're just not going anywhere. Did I forget to connect them? Hang on a minute. water. I just didn't connect them. <laughs>these are plugged in so the this stuff is all now running again which means that we'll be getting uh, rubber I just wanted to put a little window in there so we can easily tell that that's all flowing nicely and now if we come around here we should see that we are making rubber good 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 there we go nice very nice there we go look we got 200 rubber already plastics should have been going well hopefully yeah, loads of plastic, and that one's nearly full. That one's nearly full. Oh dear. Oh dear. Right, so this lot's all nearly full. Look, see, I've missed that one as well. There we go. So this actual whole thing is nearly full. Oh damn. But you can do a bit of a. You can do a, a, a flush it. So. You can hit that button, flush it, that will just basically delete all of that fuel from this entire system. So now the whole thing is empty and it will all start, up, start backing up again. Obviously you just don't want to be doing that every few minutes, but this will do for the moment. But also the room is purposefully designed. I can expand those to the bigger fuel storage once I unlock them, but it won't be really necessary because I will have the right number of generators upstairs, hopefully, running, uh, utilizing all this fuel. I might need to do something because of the fact that the pipes only 
can transport something along the lines of yeah 300 per minute inside of a pipe so I don't know but I might be generating more than that I think I'm generating around about 520 per minute for fuel so I might have to separate some of them uh, into two lines going upstairs but that's uh, that's that's nothing but anyway that's that so what we can now do oh, this is the bit I've been waiting for right we can take some of this plastic and we can take some of this rubber and we can head back to our main factory and we can unlock some stuff so industrial manufacturing industrial manufacturing let's start with that one and we need to select that 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 and that and we're ready to go Ba-boosh. milestone reached the manufacturer increases production complexity a critical look at production line logistics and efficiency is recommended during integration. The truck allows for increased efficiency in transportation, automated or otherwise. New project parts enable progress to the next phase. So importantly, what do we have now? So under production we have this manufacturer. So to create one of those um, allows us to build some really cool stuff. Uh, we also have under transportation uh, oh yeah we've, I forgot we unlocked our hypertubes I still haven't set those up yet <laughs> uh, but yeah we have the truck now so the truck so the truck carries a lot more than the tractor and is also much quicker so moving forward this will be really really useful although to be fair our tractors are doing our, their jobs perfectly so I will not take anything away from them but also we can now create heavy modular frames which use steel pipes, encased beams, screws and ordinary frames. Mm, we've got to have a think about how I get all that stuff together. Actually no, I, I have all the stuff together here. So I can really slowly start making modular frames over here because I'm going to need those to unlock some more stuff. Not modular frames, heavy, heavy frames. Mm. I do wish I'd sorted this out already because this would have made this a little easier. I'm procrastinating fixing this stores because it's kind of working, uh, even if it's a bit kind of bleh. Oh, by the way, just in case you were wondering, this this massive constra construction, this big construction here, um, it's kind of just a really, really slapdash way of making myself a, a load of these um, novelisks. So I, I collected up some uh, sulfur just in my pockets, brought it back and set this up, and this now makes uh, novelisks. Just because I, I needed to blow some stuff up, that makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> but to be fair, all of this can now go, and I will um, yeah, set up a manufacturer here so that I can at least be slowly making uh, computers and frames and stuff. Yeah. Right, there we go, that's a start. So I have this guy here now, is just going to slowly create these for me. These are the circuit boards that are required for the computers. And now that we have those going, let's go and set up a quick manufacturer. This is definitely not a permanent fixture, it's just a temporary while we have a little play with it. Basically, let's do it like this. I'm just going to place four bins behind it in a slightly crazy blocking the path way. And there we have it. It's all ready. We just need to connect power. Hopefully, it doesn't take out the grid. There we go. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Sometimes I like it when the belts are slow. These ones I don't think need to be fast because this is going to take a while to create each one. Although the screws, that's going to take forever to fill up. So <laughs> let's just give the screws a hand, shall we? There we go. <laughs> In fact, we can actually do that and speed it up even more. And there we go. It's now doing its thing. Props to the animators on this as well. The, the level of quality and detail to this is just absolutely astounding. It's so good. Like seriously. It's just in incredible. 
And that's that one done. It's ready to move on to its next one. Oh, I love it so much. So now our heavy modular frames can very slowly make their way over to this bin. <laughs> that's awesome. There they go. So just double checking what it is we're doing next. I'm trying to make sure that I can unlock this guy next. But we, once we've got all those, once we've got our heavy modular frames, we're going to need a ton of computers. And I really, really want to unlock this exosuit so I can start flying around again because that makes life a lot easier. Um, I could actually already unlock this one, so I might just go and do that now. Right, and that should be enough of everything now, so we'll go boosh, kaboosh, baboosh, and badoosh. Milestone reached. Fluids can now be packaged to allow for transportation via vehicle and conveyor belts. Additionally, highly improved biofuel can now be produced. Not the most exciting of milestones to unlock, um, but we now have this big old industrial fluid buffer, but it needs these heavy frames, so uh, I don't want to use those up yet because I want to unlock more stuff. Another quick point about how I was wrong in how quickly these would fill up so I have now expanded this. So we've gone from, I think, 9 we had. No, we had 12. Yeah, we've doubled that. So we've got 24 of these now sitting here, gathering up our fuel. Because, yeah, it was slowing down the production of my plastic because it kept filling up. Ah, oh, it's annoying. We're getting there. Well, I think that we're just going to leave it there for now. For today, anyway. We've got an awful lot done here. That is a really, really cool processing plant. There's a lot going on. We're making our plastics. We're making our rubber. It's all getting stored for now. We're almost ready to be setting up upstairs. We've just got to unlock it. We're not far away. And even with our awesome new mini power plant running over here, we're still on the cusp of power. We're always having power problems. But hopefully we can get that sorted in the next episode when we unlock the fuel generators which with the aid of some temporary setups here in our main area shouldn't take us too long at all really yeah I'm excited cool alright well as always I really hope you enjoyed the video and of course if you did please remember hit that like button and the subscribe button helps with especially if you press the little bell then you'll know when I put up new videos and all that remains for me to say is bye